Who are you? Hi, I'm Colin from Canada. How did you get in here? I don't know. Our first film is called V World Matrix, um, and I do not have an official release copy of this movie. So this is the printout from Amazon.com, their description. And they actually have spelling errors in this. They do, whatever. yeah. Two friends take a cyber vacation to experience a world where they can act out their most violent and erotic fantasies. <laughs> they soon realize they've entered a virtual free-for-all. Forbidden fantasies and desires suddenly appear in the form of ever deadlier dark women? Hey! Show us! Horribly awkward. It's confusing is what it is. Next one is The Amazing Bulk. Now, I've seen the trailer for this movie, mm, yes. and uh, it looks like a winner. And it's kind of fitting because I worked on The Incredible Hulk. So Henry Hank Howard, uh, an ambitious but frustrated young scientist, struggles to develop a superhuman serum designed to improve muscle mass and prolong life expectancy. His boss, the grumpy General Darwin, will not allow Hank to marry his daughter, Hannah, until the experiment is a success. Against Darwin's wishes, Hank attempts to propose to Hannah, but his life is shattered by a mugger who steals his engagement ring. What? Feeling dejected, Hank injects himself with the experimental serum and is transformed into his alter ego, the amazing bulk. That sounds like the plot to a soap opera. Uh, what is the plot to The Incredible Hulk? I don't even know. The Incredible Hulk? Hey, did you see the movie that you worked on? No. Come on, don't act like you've never done it before. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Dainty he's, he's mincing away. <laughs> oh no! Well, I could think of nothing better to pick a bad movie with than the wheel of the worst. So, what do we have on the wheel today? Well, Mike, let's start with Hollywood Cop. Next up is Aladdin. Now, I've noticed we've got two copies of Aladdin here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So the chances are we're going to be watching Aladdin. The chances are increased. Okay. Our third film is Jim Cotta. Now, this is my personal copy that I brought down from Canada. Uh, I've never watched it before, so I'm praying that it lands on Jim Cotta. Next up, another Aladdin. No. And we have partners. I don't know anything about this movie. Uh, well, it appears to be a crime thriller about cops. How, how, do you, how can you tell that? Well, there's some subtle hints on the cover. Next up is Alienator. Uh, in deep space, the deadliest animal is still woman. So, Jan Michael Vincent's in it, okay. That looks like someone in Kiss. Uh, it looks like Daryl Hannah. Next oh, up? Stallone, I love Stallone. It's not Sylvester Stallone. Oh. It's Frank Stallone. No, no, I love Frank Stallone, that's what I meant. What? Uh, next up is Crazy Fat Ethel 2. The sequel to Crazy Fat Ethel, apparently. Uh, starring uh, Andy Brichter? So I guess it's time to spin the wheel of the worst. Give it a good spin, Colin. On Jim Cut. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? They cut the horses. Yes. Like horsepower 
sure. I, 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 <laughs> I don't think you should look for symbolism in Jim Cotton. <laughs> well, there's just a little anti-American sentiment running around, but I think. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> He just left his girl out of yeah, nowhere. He just took off. Okay. Gymnastic, gymnastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they spread the film up. Yeah. Gymnastic. They really rushed to the, through the plot to get to the fight. Well, this is what you want to see. Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck is <laughs> See, the thing is, though, I mean, if you're paying thousands of dollars to go into V-World, why would you want to have sex with an ugly prostitute? <laughs> you can do that in the real world for less money. If you're going into V-World, I want to have sex with 1980 Cindy Crawford. <laughs> Cindy Crawford? Cindy Crawford. For a second, I thought you, you were talking about uh, Cindy Lauper. <laughs> I, I just pictured her saying girls don't want to have fun. Well, actually, that's what I was just working on. No! <laughs> oh my god! It's not even plugged in. <laughs> it's not even plugged in. <laughs> the cameraman wasn't expecting the cart to fall over. <laughs> what is that? Her? <laughs> <laughs> keep spraying it, keep spraying it, let's cut, don't cut! What? That's an old dot matrix printer. Yeah. We start off laughing quite a bit, I think, all of us. Yeah. Because yeah. it starts off funny, and you're like, ah, this is terrible. But then after a while, everybody kind of got silence. Mm, my, oh my. You've grown since the last time we played. This is, this is... Whatever we have, throw it in there. Whatever we have. This is the most baffling thing This I've is the most seen. confusing movie that we've ever watched. Yeah. What was she shooting? What was she shooting at? Look out! <laughs> One of those smart cars. <laughs> oh no, the news is on the case. I in the sky. What? They're flying sideways. <laughs> <laughs> no more failures. <laughs> it's the director. <laughs> There's this wonderful fight scene where he's just doing unnecessary gymnastics. Yeah. Do it! Yes! <laughs> There's no reason for that to be. <laughs> I hope this is uh, Wait, his hands are powered. Are his hands chalked? <laughs> <laughs> they're chalked. That's perfect. One after the other, they're gonna come through. <laughs> Why did you just run into him? <laughs> this is great! <laughs> oh, are you okay? So the king of this town that's putting on this weird competition thing, he has a daughter, and that's Jim Cotta's love interest in the movie. She's very clearly some sort of uh, Asian ethnicity, uh, but the king looks like Mel Brooks. Actually, he kind of also looks like Patrick Stewart. He also looks like Geraldo Rivera. He also looks like a bald guy who has a really horrible comb over. There can be no mistakes. Anyone trying to avoid an obstacle will be instantly killed. He, he looks like a comedy actor. Uh, a very bizarre casting choice. Uh, yeah. A lot of the characters in this movie are supposed to be some sort of other ethnicity, but they're all just like dumb looking white guys in turbans. You are making. Yeah. No. So am I. <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs>
This is my first time seeing the Star Wars Holiday Special. It's Mind my you. first time too, yeah. Wow. Rich, have you seen it before? Once. It was as bad as I remembered it before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, 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 my sister, I think it was on a Thanksgiving, was at, was at my father's house. My sister was like, there's a Star Wars Holiday Special. I'm like, what? What? This is many years ago. It was before the internet. This was not common knowledge. Okay. And then she had some kind of bootleg tape that she got at college or some such. And, and we, we sat down and we watched it, her and me. And I was, I was amazed that this is a thing whose existence was, was like covered up. It was like a men in black type of thing. Like, oh, well, I'm not talking about this thing anymore. Well, George Lucas is on record as saying, and it's on the back of every possible cover for this, if yeah. I had time and a hammer, I'd track down every bootleg copy and smash it. So George Lucas clearly was not anticipating the internet. <laughs> no, not at the time. No. Circa. It was like, like, 2000? Okay. Well, 2000, like 15 years ago? So before the September 11th attacks. Yes, it was before that. I, I, it was a wonderful thing to bring up during this cheerful holiday discussion about Star Wars. I'm, I'm just getting a time frame. Yeah. <laughs> Younger people, that's probably a good way to approach it, actually. So. Like pre September 11th, post September 11th. <laughs> no! Jack, it was a different time back then, okay? It's true. The world was different. It's true. Not everybody knew about the Star Wars holiday special. It's true. There was a lot of, lots of babies being born yeah. in September of 2001. Not yeah. everyone <laughs> knew about the holiday... Oh, God. The, not everyone knew about the Star Wars holiday special, but some people knew about the September 11th attack. They're very, very similar. <laughs> I don't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Rich, you, you saw this. I, I, I saw this. You, was, you watched this on September 11th, right? That's what we're talking about? Yes, that's what I did. No, Whichever one of you is editing I, this. It was just, that, that day, I think, you know, just disaster was on my mind. I, that's understandable. So obviously this led to the Star Wars holiday special. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no! This is all staying in, by the it's way. It's all staying in. <laughs> it's all staying in. Oh, no. Well, now you have to answer it. Answer it on camera. On camera. Hello? Hey, what's going on? It's lumpy. <laughs> yeah, yeah? Was it depressing? Another funeral. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Hold on. We're just going to drink all of them. <laughs> tell, tell him about the video. Shut Ready? up! Okay, okay. I, I'm trying to talk to eight people. This is okay. <laughs> and we <laughs> no, we're we're filming a roundtable discussion about the Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> and then you you called, yeah. And someone forgot to turn off their ringer. Someone forgot to turn off their ringer. A true professional. True. <laughs> I get one phone call every year. God damn it. <laughs> I I will talk to you later, Terry. Okay. <laughs> All right, bye -bye. Rich has been bye. drinking. <laughs> Rich has been drinking. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now, back to 9-11. Speaking of Star Trek, have you guys heard that Robert Orsi, the, the oh. visionary uh, genius. <laughs> screenwriter. The, the, the screenwriting duo of Robert Orsi and... Uh, Kurtzman. Alex Kurtzman. Alex Kurtzman. Robert Orsi is no longer direct, uh, slated to direct Star Trek III. Yeah. See, I, it was going to be his directorial debut, it was gonna now be he's his, not yeah. directing it. They, they, Robert Orsi and uh, did he Alex step Kurtzman... Down? Well, yeah, he did. They, they split their writing partnership and said, he said, I'm going to direct Star Trek III, and now he's stepping down. I don't know why. Did he read the script and say, this is too coherent? <laughs> This makes too much sense. I can't be involved with this. Oh, I thought you were going with it. it was his own script. He read the script oh, and said, this I, script can't, is terrible. I can't film this shit. I can't. Or he All of a sudden, it. he took off his writing hat and put on his directing hat. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah. Fired his writer. Speaking of negative, we watched the Star Wars Holiday Special. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Wookiees in this, and they don't speak English. They just make noises, and there's no subtitles right. for 50% yeah. of the movie. Speaking of n not speaking English, let's talk about the immigration issue. 
<laughs> now, Obama recently passed. Day of the Dead is an underrated movie, I think. Day of the Dead's my favorite of the Jordan Is that the one with the, the city? Like, it's a city of survivors? No, that's, that's, that's the garbage one. That's, that's land the garbage of the one. Dead. Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's 20 years later. Day, oh. Day of the Dead is a great movie. Day. Would you guys agree? I think, I think people like Day. It doesn't get, it's not as well known, but the people who know about it, I think, all like Day it. Day of the Dead uh, is, is a great film and concept. I think there's a lot of overacting. The overacting is part of what makes it great, though. Mainly by... Um, Joe Pilato. Joe Pilato. Joe Pilato makes that movie. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time! Uh, the, the, the Romero trilogy is... Are, are great films. Yeah, absolutely. That's the one where the beginning's got that zombie in the middle of the street, like the jaw missing, right? Yeah, really... yeah just the tongue flopping yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe they're in Miami. In yeah, the they're beginning. in Florida, and there's like an alligator yeah. in the street, and yeah. zombies everywhere. There's, a, there's an underground. The, the second one, of course, uh, takes place in a shopping mall. Of course, the which, famous. The yes. famous shopping mall, which was remade in uh, 2008. Four. Oh, four. four. Yeah. Uh, Dawn so of the Dead. Short. Yes, mm -hmm. with, with Ving Rhames and uh, Sarah Polly. Yes, and, subpar. Uh, written by James Gunn. Written by James Gunn. Written by Gunn. James Gunn. Directed by some asshole. Directed by Hack Snyder. <laughs> Zack Snyder, yes. I really hate the remake. Uh, the th Who also directed the Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about that. Well, uh, I, I attended a horror convention mm. uh, in 2004 in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a hundred people showed up to the horror convention because it was very poorly advertised. Sure. Okay. And there was about forty-eight different celebrities there. Uh, oh my gosh, young Jason. He's at every convention. Well, though, okay. that guy. Uh, D uh, I, Doug I, Bradley was there. Doug, uh, Sid Haig was there. Sid Haig, yeah. I wasn't there, and I know all the guests. Yeah. Young, young, young Jason is that like. Jason Voorhees as a child? Jason? Yeah, okay. in the first one. Okay. He, he's in a band called First Jason, because that's what he's just clinging to. <laughs> Desperately clinging. Um, oh my god, so many people were Angela there. Bettis was there from the film yeah. May, which is yeah. a movie I'm a big fan of. Um, you actually called me from that convention. And you're like, do you want to talk to any of these people? No one's around. <laughs> Stu Stuart Gordon, the famous director. Yes. I gave him, we, we were making fun of him. <laughs> To his face. I didn't know who he was. We gave him a copy Stuart of Gordon. Orange's Revenge of the Eggplant. Yeah. We're like, hold this. Hold this, Stuart Gordon. <laughs> and we're going to take pictures of you while you're holding it. And he's like, what is this? Yes, and... Uh, um, Joe Pilato. Joe Pilato, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then after the... Con stay on... Stay on topic. So Mike. I saw I saw Doug Bradley yelling at the 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 guy who ran the convention. Doug Bradley. Doug Bradley played Pinhead in the Hellraiser. Movie. There we go. Thank yeah. you. And he's like he's like you. The fucking fourth one directed idiot. by Alan Smithy. He's there like, we go. He was yelling at him and cursing him out outside because he he so poorly managed this horror sure. convention. Nobody showed up to it. Yeah. He's like, you, you're such a fucking idiot, sure. blah, 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 blah. Well, and a lot of the people, like the celebrities that attend these conventions don't make a lot of money just from attending. Like right. they have to they sell want, stuff. They sell their signatures. Yeah. And yeah. this is how they make their and living. And I got a signature from... Um, uh, um, no, no, Ken Forey? Ken Forey. We haven't gotten to Joe Pilato yet. We're, We're leading up I to... can't wait to So, so I, I, I had a table with uh, some friends of mine from Arizona, who, uh, a guy named uh, Jeff Dolniak. Who produced, who produced a DVD called 42nd Street Forever. Which is a big series now. Which is a big series now uh, of uh, Grindhouse trailers. And, uh, you know, he, he started that. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm going to buy all these old trailers and I'm going to put them on DVD. I was like, all right, whatever. Um, he's like, you want one fourth of my table for 20 bucks at this horror convention? Sure. sure. <laughs> um, and then no one showed up to it. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, and then at night, Everyone's in the bar. It, well, of course. That's and, what you um, do after the convention. Huh? That's what you do after convention. And I go up to the bar and I'm like, can I get a drink? And I order a drink. And next to me ordering a drink is Doug Bradley. <laughs> He's like, I need a drink too. Hurry up. <laughs> and then we, we had a burger with the guy with the deformed face. Oh, you no, Chicken Wings with Michael Berryman. Michael I remember Berryman. your life stories better than you do. <laughs> Michael Berryman. And, and everyone's eating with, oh, this is the story. Everyone's... <laughs> I'm eating a burger, and he's eating chicken wings, and it's Michael Berryman, who is in The Hills Have Eyes, okay. the original. He, he's one of the guy, the biker guys at the end of Weird Science, with the weird face. Gotcha. And the whole oh, time, okay. the whole time I'm thinking he is 
the guy from Goonies. <laughs> Sloth? Sloth. I didn't know. I don't know this stuff. But then uh, Joe Pilato comes down, and oh, Joe Pilato showed up earlier in the day, yeah. walking around with his wife, and he's wearing nothing but a bathrobe. <laughs> And, and he's, he's drinking in public out of a, a flask. Just going, blah, blah. Sure. And then he, he shows up and he, he comes down into the hotel with a, nothing but a bathrobe on. Yeah. And he's like, where's the hot tub? And he's wasted. Um, what else happened there? Is that the story? Is that the story? That's, that's the Joe Pilato story, I think. <laughs> you, you didn't tell it in the best way, but you had... Your Joe Pilato story ends with no interaction with Joe Pilato? Oh, no, I didn't have personal interaction with him, no. You were too busy eating chicken wings with Michael Berryman. I was eating chicken wings with Michael That's a dumb Why story. Why isn't that the Michael Berryman story? <laughs> I guess it could be. I don't know how Michael Berryman was. I, 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 I thought Michael Berryman was sloth, and if I told them that, him that in person, he probably would have been offended. Here's the bigger question. How many goddamn times are they going to try and open this park? <laughs> Every time they do it, it ends in disaster. <laughs> All, all, all I saw was the trailer, from the trailer, was Chris Pratt on a motorcycle, and uh -huh. dinosaurs running alongside him on the motorcycle, and I said, Nope. Sold. <laughs> no, no. 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 <laughs> Sold in, in a bad way. Oh, in a I knew you were saying now you're excited. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Sold. Sold in a, in, in a schlock way. Like, oh, I get, this is what they're doing. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. That would be a better way to put it. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Not no, no, no. Like, you said it, I was like, oh. Sold. I'm like, on board with this. No, 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 no. It's like, Velociraptors are their friends now. Here's, here's the new movie. Do, do, do. You know, and they do this whole thing and then it's like, no. Yeah. No, it's going to be as bad as the third one. No. Rich, are you, are you, what are you talking about specifically? <laughs> I'm talking about people who are absolutely fanatical will keep buying and buying something as long as it has their favorite logo on it. So, so what you're talking about are the Hobbit movies. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the same, same shit over and over again. Well, but I guess he, this is the pro. Like, I, I liked the Lord of the Rings movies. I read the Lord of the Rings books when I was younger. I was a big fan of them. I, uh, I want to say I went to the, the midnight releases of all three oh Lord of the God. Rings movies. I'm a nerd. I did too, so it's okay. Really? And I did. I went. Well, I went to the midnight showings of uh, Two Towers and Return of the King. I yeah. did. We I played, loved those. Movies. We played. Uh, me and my friends played card games while we waited for the movies. It was really great. I didn't do that. You fucking nerd. Here's the thing. There is a I, thing. There is a thing. By the way. Um, where people were complaining that Peter Jackson called the Two Towers. He had to change the name of it because of 9-11. But he called it the Two Towers. But the books were called Two Towers. Do you remember this? The no. books and the movie and is the movie called the Two Towers. But they said because of 9-11, because it came out in 2002, Something 2002 like that, yeah. that he needed to change the name. Oh, they were trying to encourage him to change the name. Oh, and then he, he, was, he was calling it the Two Towers, be, trying to capitalize on 9-11. Oh, so stupid oh. people were complaining. And we're like, the, the books were called the Two Towers, yeah. and because, yeah. But I guess to wrap around the story, to get back on topic, I'm a Lord of the Rings fanboy. Oh, sure. And I have not seen any of the Hobbit movies because really? they look terrible. They look oh, wow. terrible. You haven't even seen them just out of any sense of loyalty or of interest? Of course not. Or, okay. They look like bad movies. This is the thing, is though, is they're not terrible they're movies. They're not bad movies. They're just, no. It's just taking you know, this much material and stretching it right, out. Right, but why to... would I want to ruin, like, The Hobbit is a really nice book. It's a nice yeah. light read. Why would I want to ruin that with... Just wait for the inevitable fan edit, where they take all three movies and they cut it down to 90 minutes, and I'm sure it'll be great. Because it's, it's still good filmmaking. Peter Jackson is still a good filmmaker. Mm. It's different than a George Lucas type. Sure. Where he just forgot how to make movies. Uh, uh, Peter Jackson still knows how to make a movie. He just doesn't know how to edit. Despite being the blandest movie ever, Captain Marvel is a lot of things to a lot of people. It's the movie Rotten Tomatoes doesn't want anyone to have an opinion on. The movie dumb bearded white guys are protesting. They're so scared of people actually calling this movie out for what it is, which is feminist propaganda. Now I haven't seen it, 
The movie other dumb bearded white guys are white knighting. The movie Brie Larson doesn't want us to see. I do not need a 40 year old white dude. I don't hate white dudes. Am I saying that I hate white dudes? No. The movie that inspired a ton of cheap clickbait articles from terrible online journalists who have no idea how Rotten Tomatoes works. The movie easily manipulated Twitter-obsessed weirdos have given a ton of free publicity to by convincing themselves this corporate product is a feminist cause. The movie that had charities started for it in order for underprivileged little girls to be able to see, which benefits absolutely nobody but Disney. Buy these fucking poor kids some food instead, you fuckers! It's Captain Marvel! If the movie is a hit, it's because society has become enlightened enough to celebrate a female-led action movie. Finally! If the movie is a flop, it's because of toxic online trolls. Finally! No other explanations exist! Eat the multi-billion dollar corporate slop and pretend it's social justice, you weirdos! Thanks for making the world an embarrassing nightmare, everyone. <laughs> what did you think of Captain Miscast? Yeah. That joke has to have been made by somebody already, right? It's too obvious. Uh, uh, I thought the movie was adequate. Um, and then I watched a clip of Brie Larson speaking. <laughs> and now I hate the movie. Uh, I think we should talk about the elephant in the room. And, and that's like the controversy, quote unquote, surrounding this movie and... Uh, Brie Larson's comments at uh, some kind of women in film event, and uh, uh, she got a big old case of foot and mouth syndrome. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, her comments essentially were, uh, the first thing I saw was a, a, a black woman was interviewing her, and she says, how important is women in film? What does it mean to be a woman in film? It means it's really hard. I remember reading when, when Captain Marvel was about to come out, or even in production, early stages of it. Brie Larson cast as Captain Marvel, right? And uh, it, was, it was a finally moment, you know. Mar the Marvel franchise of, of 37 movies finally has its <laughs> first female lead. Yeah. Female lead. Yeah. But she's white. Mm. And so there was, there was that kind of like, yeah. they deflated everybody. And there is, there is a school of thinking within feminism that if y you are a white woman, you can't be a true feminist because you are not uh, doubly uh, oppressed. Mm. All I know is that she's white lady yeah. and she, and oh, yeah, not quite there. Well, the funny thing about that interview clip is it's, yeah, it's a black woman interviewing her. And then Brie Larson's like, it's hard for women in the industry, especially black women. Uh, and if you're a woman of color, then it's really, really hard. It's like, flip that microphone around. Let the black woman talk about that. Like, is that a race-splaining? Could we call it that? Per I don't know. Perhaps, Jay, if you're <laughs> gonna get down in the muck. Um, then, uh, so then you have this like kind of awkward moment, you know, where it's like, we didn't get 100% of what we wanted. Um, and I feel a little like then Brie Larson had the spotlight on her. Therefore, she starts to do a little virtue signaling Ah, uh, and then she turns on the white guys yeah. to show that she is down with the struggle <laughs> of feminism. Only 2.5% of those top critics were women of color. This blonde white woman from Southern California. Sure, yeah. um, and, then, and then it turns into like this rant about film critics. That 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Film critics being mostly white men, right? And then there's, there's, she broke down the statistics, right? And then she's like, I don't care what a 40 year old white guy has to say about- a White wrinkly, dude. White dude. She had to make it sound more condescending. Yeah. Uh, I don't care what a 40 year old white dude has to say about a wrinkle in time, cause that movie wasn't made for him. I do not need a 40 year old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about a wrinkle in time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what that film meant to women of color, to biracial women, to teen women of color, to teens. I'm sure there's lots of white male critics that have watched movies that quote, weren't made for them and said that they were great films. Well, I think there's, there's a, the kernel of what she was probably trying to say is a positive thing. 
Uh, but I think the way she expressed it was like the worst possible way. Sure. I watched a documentary recently called Horror Noir. It's uh, only streaming on Shudder. We're not sponsored by Shudder, but it's a horror streaming service. It's a documentary about the history of African-American representation in horror, kind of framed from like uh, Night of the Living Dead to Get Out. And so it's all interviewing, you know, black filmmakers, black actors. And there's one part, it's a really good documentary, but there's one part in particular where they're talking about the movie Candyman, which is one of my favorite horror movies of the 90s. Uh, and they bring up things about Candyman that I never would have thought of because they come from, you know, a different life experience, different background, different history. And I was like, that's great. Like, I just, they've made me look at this movie in a way that I wouldn't have otherwise. So more voices is a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's all she had to say. But by, like, making this weird, condescending, snarky, like... I don't need to listen to white dudes. It just comes across so bizarre. There's different movies speak to different people of different races, ages, genders, but she's she's making it out, at least from what I saw, that there needs to be more diversity in film criticism. Which is such a small, like... It's the it's... least <laughs> important thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> You know what I mean? And we're saying that as people that review movies, but it's very, very true. In terms of, <laughs> in terms of social justice, yes, it yes. is the least important thing. Film criticism. Yeah. And, and well, that, that's the other thing to point out too is that what we're talking about movies like A Wrinkle in Time, like I know that was based on a book, but like Captain Marvel, the Star Wars movies, like these are big generic yeah. entertainment. You know, we're not talking about. Uh, Moonlight. I was just going to use like, that as an example. Like Tangerine, which is a movie from a few years ago yeah. that I really loved that was about African American trans prostitutes, and it's a fantastic movie. Yes. But and, and what are their what are their review scores, Jay? <laughs> a movie about a, a black uh, transgendered prostitute doesn't speak to a forty year old white man, but I could bet you dollars to donuts a whole bunch of forty year old white men gave that movie a good review. Aside from, I guess we can talk about the '90s references or whatever, but more than that. The fact that they've now kind of retroactively, because Marvel movies have been going on for over 10 years now, they've retroactively made her like the most important person in the entire Marvel universe. The Avengers is named after her. She's technically now the first Avenger. She's technically now the first Avenger. They got to retitle that. Uh, Get rid of that white dude! <laughs> they got to retitle Captain America movie. Nick Fury using a piece of scotch tape to pull a fingerprint off from when the guy touched his uh, his uh, badge, then using that on the doorknob, the control panel thing, yeah, was the most clever thing I've seen. And then <laughs> Captain Marvel says, oh, I just blow the doors open with my laser hands. Yeah, and she could have done that the whole time, so her not doing that to help him out earlier just kind of makes her look inconsiderate. Yeah. Uh, she also steals a motorcycle early on. But, uh, but Jay. Well, the guy was being the a, guy was being a douche. He, he was being douchey. So, so it was okay. So it's okay to to steal his vehicle. Well, it's just a girl. You know, it's I'm just a girl. Oh, like, I get uh, it. Yeah. Oh, I get there's it. There's a message there. <laughs> there, there. I don't know if there was a message with Nirvana, "Come as you are." Maybe she. That's how she learns to be who she really is. Come as you are. Is that like a personal attack or something? Or you... I, actually, I actually like shifted in my seat because I could feel Kurt Cobain rolling in his grave underneath me. Kurt Cobain was incinerated, Jay. Oh. And his ashes scattered to the wind <laughs> after Courtney Love <laughs> him. <laughs> Endgame is the perfect name for the next film. And then take a break. They well, won't, but they should. Well, we have Spider-Man Far From Home coming out. Oh, yeah. Although that's going to be, I assume that's going to be a pre- Infinity War storyline. I don't Look, know. Spider-Man turned to dust just like Kurt Cobain, okay? <laughs> Thanos got him. Um, uh, so yeah, it's gotta be pre-Infinity War. Or it's post and the entire existence of the movie is a spoiler. Yes. This this takes place after Endgame. Oh spoilers, they beat Thanos yeah. and changed history. <laughs> now Spider-Man's in Rome. It'll end with the other 50% of life in the universe dissolving. And then everybody's just dead. And then it's just, then we just like watch like ultra time lapse of the universe, like just stars burning out. Cold death, as they call it, right? Just all the lights going out in the universe. Yeah. Like, and then the screen just goes black, like the end of Lars von Trier's Melancholia. Yeah. For, for a while, like when, when these characters were running around, I, I kept thinking of that Jupiter Ascending movie for some reason. <laughs> 
I think it was like the elf ears or the dog nose or something. <laughs> I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. Um, You're the first person to think of that movie in three years. I know, but it, it, it was a lot of the, you know, the spaceships and the, you know, uh, and I was like, okay, what if you took Jupiter Ascending and then just like threw Nick Fury in there and a Tesseract and, uh, you know, and then, and then just said, hey, this is a Marvel this, movie. Th this, uh, you know, uh, 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 Channing Tatum with, with the dog nose is, is a superhero that you never heard of. Just trust us. Uh, <laughs> and then everyone would be like, this was great. <laughs> and 89% Rotten Tomatoes score. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I kind of had that feeling like this, if, if completely removed from the Marvel Universe, yeah. as a 100% standalone film, no other comic book movies were in existence, and they said, here's our science fiction film about a lady who uh, yeah. stood too close to an engine that exploded in her face and, and then turned into a space, space laser. <laughs> and then a cat uh, ate a cube and had tentacles come out of its mouth. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. This is terrible. Well, Jay, winter's almost over. That means it's time for summer. What are you going to do with those six days? <laughs> Well, it's time for Ready Player One, the movie directed by Steven Spielberg, um, that the Huffington Post says is delightful. The Grown Ups Harry Potter. What? The, the, well, that's, these are reviews from the book. Oh, okay. As one adventure leads expertly to the next, the time, time simply evaporates, the Entertainment Weekly. And I'm not sure what the reviews are of the movie. Right, so we're, we're, we're going? We're I'm still we're... doing the voiceover. Oh. And I'm not sure what the reviews of the movie are. I think it's doing well. Well, Jay, what did you think of Ready Player One? It, it, it sure was a movie. You, 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 know, you know, Mike, as, as part of the, the, the stupid popcorn munching American populace, mm -hmm. it sure is nice to go and see a movie and you know everything that's going to happen from the first frame of the movie. I can't say I hate it, but it, it, it really, it's, it just felt like painting by the numbers. It was a big pile of trash. It was a trash fire. Rarely do I read the source material. I read the book. Why? For the, okay. Why did you read this particular book? You know what? I had some downtime. Uh-huh. And I picked it up and I'm like, this isn't bad. And I read it. Right. Oh my God. I'm a grown man reading a YA novel. This is shameful. So I put a, a slip cover over it that was pornography. Uh, Cause I was so ashamed, <laughs> like, like, like really embarrassing, disgusting pornography. Right. Um, right. Like, it was like, like, like fecal. Oh, fecal, fecal porn. Yeah. Okay. It okay. Was, it was called the, the glass toilet. It was like a, like an avant-garde sex novel. Is the book, is the book more interesting, less interesting? Well, here's the thing. I think that's why this movie gave me such a headache because yeah. the novel, uh, it's cute. I keep touching the book. You just it's fucking crazy. <laughs> um. One of my one of my one of my problems with this as a movie is the character is fucking useless. First it's, of all, it's it's got the this this as a movie it's got the Avatar problem for me. Where Avatar is a fine movie, but the main character is such a such a boring wet white rice motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just so bland, yeah. the protagonist in Avatar, and the protagonist in this, I get nothing out of the, it's just, I'm the, I'm the white guy protagonist, man. I'm not gonna do anything, and all of these more interesting characters around me, yeah. they're gonna do all of the shit, and I'm gonna get all of the credit. I wanna talk about Ty Sheridan a little. Which one is Ty Sheridan? The main character. Oh, okay. I'll take a nap. He, he, um, no, I, he played Cyclops. In in the new the new ish X Men okay, movies. Okay, okay. I feel bad for him. Um, he, he's in a hit Spielberg movie, and you feel bad for him. Well, he he I don't know what else he's been in. He's probably been in some other things, but he 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 was hired when you hire a Cyclops, right? Yeah. You get an actor with a very pronounced lips, <laughs> nose, <laughs> jawline, right? Ty Sheridan has giant lips, and he's very has a very pronounced jaw and nose, and and. He, when you take his goggles off, he looks like just some guy. Yeah. 
And then so he w- get that guy to play Cyclops. Cover his eyes up. <laughs> and then now he's in this movie. And he's wearing a visor. And it's got the things on the side. And he looks just like Cyclops. Have you ever heard of anyone being typecast for being a Cyclops? Typecast for just the guy with the mouth? He's got that mouth. <laughs> we did that guy with the mouth. Get the guy with the, the lips and the jaw and the nose. We can't see his eyes. Cover his eyes up with some thing. That's his new role. I got some great exposure from you. You're gonna start a Spielberg film. Nobody's gonna see a face. <laughs> you're gonna go play. 90% of the movie, you're gonna look like a digital elf. <laughs> Your nose and lips are going places, kid. <laughs> We're gonna get you a career in the lip balm industry. <laughs> lip balm ads. Your mouth's gonna be everywhere, kid. This movie needed like a Jesse Eisenberg. It needed a little bit, a little bit more charisma in the main oh, role. Oh. Just a little bit more charisma. Not necessarily him. I'm just saying somebody. Jesse Eisenberg is a charisma void. Why would you choose him as an example? I, uh, I nerdy. I was just thinking nerdy kid. Okay, okay, you, maybe the Social Network film. Yeah, yeah, or, or the other one that's not Jesse Eisenberg and he's not in anything anymore, who's the other one? Oh, you're gonna have to be more specific. Wasn't he the, 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 the... Give me a clue here, Rich. What's his fucking name? I mean, Jay. What's his fucking name? Jason Bateman? Michael Jackson? Tom Waits? The other, the other nerdy kid actor who's gone now. Gary Coleman? Wasn't he in that uh, Ricky Schroeder? Wasn't he in that movie with the, the wasn't he in the McLovin movie, right? What's his I don't know. The guy the other guy the other nerdy guy. It's fine. Jay, you're really slipping on your pop culture I am. references. I am. I mean you used to be right on the ball with everything. Michael Cera. Michael Cera. Michael Cera. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Cera is like forty five now. I know. I don't think I play a high schooler. Uh, I know. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying, Rich. Uh, a, a more charismatic lead. They yeah. they picked him because of the lips. <laughs> uh, nine nine ninety five percent of the film that's real life action, he's got his goggles on, yeah. and the rest of the film he's a digital elf. <laughs> um, so he has approximately one percent of the film is is just like him going like this. Well, who's the audience? Uh, um, 48-year-old <laughs> white guys. <laughs> what? And I was wondering what the MPAA thought of all that blood from The Shining scene. That's a lot of blood. You know, they would excuse that because it's from a classic movie, Mike. You think so? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I think. they would just see that as a reference. I don't, I don't think they have strict guidelines. As far as, as far as I know, it's just how they feel after they watch the damn movie. Oh, okay. I've heard it explained that way once. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a technicality. No. It's a sort of like, no. okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, there's 20,000 gallons of human blood, uh, <laughs> but I guess that's fine. But Kill Bill, you got to turn that scene into black and white because that's real blood. Not nightmare blood, not ghost blood. <laughs> What's the difference, MPAA? I don't know. I think this I, blood isn't real. <laughs> well, the, the, the Kill Bill blood's not real either. It's, it's a movie. It's corn syrup. Red dye. <laughs> it's all corn syrup. Look, we're the MPAA. You get out of here. I don't like you. Your movie's getting an X. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we don't do X anymore. <laughs> and what do we do now? NC-17. Your movie's an NC-17. Get out of my office. <laughs> I'm in control of this town. <laughs> You'll never work in this town again. <laughs> oh, I think a rating system's fine, you know? I wonder, the, I mean, is there like, is there any kind of like infighting? Like we don't, we don't like oh. su- such and such a company. We're gonna make it harder for them. Are, we're are we're you gonna saying, be more strict on their Are you saying there are, is, there, is there secret politics at play in, in a giant what I'm, multi-billion dollar industry? That's what I'm saying. My answer's probably. <laughs> Yeah. Spielberg's got gallons of blood in his new film. <laughs> it's fine, it's a G. That's the new Sam Raimi film? Cut it all out. <laughs> Make it all green, because I've decided green's the color your blood must be. I'm in charge. <laughs> oh, Mr. Spielberg, here's your blood. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, do you need any more blood, Mr. Spielberg? <laughs> You'll make us all the money, Mr. Spielberg. Mr. Spielberg, you missed a spot on the wall in that scene. (laughs) 
I'm sure your computer technicians put in more blood. Should we cover ourselves in blood, Mr. Spielberg? <laughs> How much blood do you need? <laughs> Spielberg says, thank you, gentlemen. And he goes to the elevator and it opens up and just like... <laughs> we did that just for you, Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> We had that blood imported from young virgins in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair, the kids next to us did shut up once the movie had finally started. No, they, they started, I mean, I was closer to them. They started chatting. Did they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they, were, they were facing the other way. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't looking at I, them. Yeah, they I, was, I keep tabs around. of these things, yes. <laughs> He was playing with like the details on the seat. And then they were talking to each other. Yeah. And at one point, one of them farted. <laughs> they went, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was me, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was, that, really was, that, was, that was me, Jay Bowman. Oh, Jay. I, I farted during the movie. <laughs> you and your, your, your chronic gas problem. Hasn't the, your doctor solved that yet? Mm -hmm. All right. Something reminded me of a David Lynch film, and I just got so excited I farted. <laughs> you and your David Lynch films. <laughs> you and your weird, obscure horror movies, Jay. <sighs> Time to log into the Oasis.